what was I going to do? Give the child up to her grandma? It's something I faced and had to look at in the book. And at a time also when the male part of me did want to go out and be with women. If like me or someone that struggles with the mental health. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass. But you are not alone. As you'll see from this podcast. In this episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by the New York Times bestselling author of novels, Beautiful Children, and Alice and Oliver, Charles Bock. Charles is a creative writing professor at New York University, and amongst other things, we're going to talk about what it's like being a dad to daughters. I was determined to give and to try and rise to the moment. I also am a, like, I'm really a limited person. I'm really a small, selfish kind of I like jokes. I like sports. I like music. I'm like a, I'm a teenage boy, basically. I don't want to do this. And obviously, Charles, I, I don't know you. I've known you for 25 minutes, but I would challenge no. that because actually, yes, okay, I'm sure you are an element of those things. But from the one thing that does come through, it, you, you couldn't be doing anymore. A lot of people don't yeah. do their best. And actually, right. your daughter couldn't be more loved. I don't think you can do any more. So uh, from one dad to another, I think you smashed it. I think you really did. And I'll be lots of dads who I think will find your book very cathartic because I think it will go, oh my goodness, actually, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. Because none of us think we're doing okay. None of us. I think guilt is just an underlying theme of parenting, basically. I, You know what? And to be a, a man, like... I will take any opportunity to feel sorry for myself. I will mope and I look at the person on the other side of the fence and they always have it. They have or do something. I can always find something I don't have or, or whatnot. I called the book, I will do better because I would say that a hundred times a day to myself, like, okay, yeah. something else here. Okay. I'll, I, and I feel that's a part of parenting is, okay. The ice cream fell on the fucking floor again. I, I did. I got the wrong f this. I did this wrong. Okay, but you always have you have that next chance. Where I think your book will really help a lot of dads, and to an extent, where I hope my podcast will will help people. It won't change a dad thinking I could do more, but it might say, okay, I'm not the only dad. I'm not the only dad who is feeling at times like they're not doing enough or they they could do better. There needs to be more spaces where men go, mate, you're doing all right. I'm not going to let right. you beat the shit out of yourself unnecessarily. Yes, right. okay, we can all improve. But actually, on the grand scheme of, of parenting role models, I think you could give yourself a bit more credit. I think yeah, that needs right. to be a voice in the world that isn't there at the moment. Right. Well, that's smart. That's a good. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. I tried to write a book that you, someone would read in one or two sittings that would be easy to read, that would be recognizable, that would be enjoyable in the sense that the sentences have surprises and are interesting and that would tell a story where it does have these things, where, it's, where it is a fairy tale. It is a fairy tale. Yeah. There is. It is like, how are we going to survive to happily ever after? Is there such a thing? We were put in a kind of a nightmare scenario. And for guys, we don't raise kids on our own. We we don't. And I was put in a situation where I, I do. Okay, I have to. What was I going to do? Give the child up to her grandma and, not, and have her know that her dad wouldn't do yeah. it? That was a possibility. And it's something I faced and had to look at in the book and at a time also when the male part of me did want to go out and be with women. But the larger what's right and my love for my daughter, which is something every father has and feels. Yeah. I, I think that guys who read this get to recognize and get to walk around in both parts of themselves. The part that's like, fuck this. I, this is the fucking worst yeah and part that does rise to the occasion and that could be a good thing reading the book i felt like you actually mentioned the elephant in the room and as you said instead of going oh being a parent's amazing and it is amazing and 
Yes, we would all lie down on the road for our kids. I get that. But I think there needs to be, we need to discuss the thing where like, this is shit. I am this on my, shit. Oh, this is no fun. <laughs> um, That's right. And I think it's okay. I think it's okay to normalize that and just say, I don't have the answers and I should be awesome at this. I feel like I'm rubbish. For someone it's else to go, so hey, you're actually doing all right. You're just having a shitty day. That's right. Um, it's so interesting because like mommy blogs and mom culture involves like complaining. Well, like, it, 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 yeah, it just does. But it's complaining over wine or the, all of them sitting at the coffee clutch or wearing their fucking sweaters and vibing and being maternal and being female together. And to be a man is to not do that sh stuff. No, not. And I, when I'm not podcasting, I try and write ridiculous ukulele parody songs about parenting. Yeah. There's so much humor in actually like literally thinking my hands smell of someone else's shit. Oh this my, is, absolutely. Or, it's like, this absolutely. is disgusting. And actually just, I, I, I wanted to say, I went home to stay with my mum uh, last week and actually, and this isn't to take away from any of the other authors I've had on the podcast because I've had some lovely authors who yeah. um, have written great books. But I said to my mum, I was quite excited to talk to you because this is the first, in my mind, proper author of actually reading your book felt like, and as I said, this is not to take away anything from anyone else's book, but when, but reading my book, I wrote a book called First Time Dad, and you read yeah. it, and it's well-meaning, and hopefully there are moments, that, but it, it's not written by someone who's, who's a writer, whereas when I read your book, it felt like, this is a writer, this is actually, and I think it's okay to acknowledge that difference, that's fine, yeah. but I was excited, because I like, I, it felt grown up to feel like I actually have, I have a grown up author on my podcast thank you so much that's nice of you to say i teach writing i spent my life like with words trying to make good sentences and good paragraphs and to show college students how to do that and to put that to apply it to something that seems known in the sense of parenting yeah but really to be a what it means to be a father what it means to be a man also to watch your kid and know as soon as they say daddy daddy look at me they're gonna face plant and to kind of enjoy it to like to have a sense of humor and also a sense of life's wonder it was a bit quite a challenge and it was like a good challenge like something i want to try and get down and convey because i could get pretentious and be like oh there's again you have fathers and sons there's this and that and these relationships of men being fathers and reacting to dads and all through literature but really i wanted to write about me and my daughter yeah and to do that well and to do that in a way where someone especially a, a dad say could start to read and go i feel this way i am not so alone Look what this guy went through, and I'm not going through that. I recognize this. Here I am, even as I'm someone totally different. That seemed like an amazing, a worthwhile challenge. And that's kind of a good part of writing is that, is that feeling of this is something I want to take on as opposed to, oh, my God, I have to prep my class. Oh, my God, I have to fill out a form for whatever reason, and I have to... Yeah answer some bullshit question i was a totally different experience and then also i hope and believe that a good thing is to recreate the wonder of being in your in bed with your kid at bedtime reading to them and when they snuggle into you and you feel their breasts and what they had for dinner you can taste yeah. you can smell faintly it, those moments where we look at our kids and are like i can't believe how beautiful you yeah. are yeah and i think i can't believe this moment i got to try and put that on paper to cap to keep those moments like my kid trying to play the violin and she couldn't fucking play the violin <laughs> to, it, to save humanity it would not happen but she I'd love to hear <laughs> and how that. beautiful just her head was. Yeah. Boy I, is trying to hold the goddamn thing. I know what you mean. I'm yeah. I'm naturally quite a cynical person. I've always been yeah. quite sarcastic to my and it's not a great quality. But I think 
becoming a dad. And I, my, our eldest, we've got a daughter. And I think, as you said, becoming a dad, one of the best things about it is you suddenly get unconditional love. Like, yeah. yes, you love your partner. Yes, you love your friends, but not in the same way that you love your children. That's right. They yeah. can drive you absolutely insane. But at the end of the day, when they snuggle into you, you're like, it's all forgiven. And to me, it just shows, God, that this blood stuff is pretty powerful because you've been doing my head in all day. And now you saying, I love you, daddy. And having a cuddle is, it's all done. It's all, it's powerful stuff. It's amazing. And it's, and you all, it's an amazing thing. And I did not appreciate my own dad until I became a father. And even now as a teenager, my kid is a teenager. The girl in this book is grown. She's a teenager. There's time she looks at me and I see and understand. I recognize like she thinks of me in some ways the way I used to think of my dad as like trying hard, hopeless, hopeless, hopelessly uncool. If I reach out and say, well, this, it's wrong. Yeah, I'm definitely deep. My dad threw it. I put him through it. I think at some point I said to him, boy, I understand so much more now. Yeah. And his answer always was, well, you'll pay it forward to your kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you'll do for your kid the way I did for you. And it's, it's such a beautiful, selfless idea. And even there, what a tremendous guy, as opposed to saying, oh, my God, you were such a shit to me. Yeah. You were I, such a little asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and I see my daughter do it to me. She totally does it to me. We're, all, we're at this stage and I think it happens somewhere. I've got a 10-year-old son. My six-year-old still thinks I'm all right. Yes. He still thinks yes, I'm yes, cool. Yes. My 10-year-old's like, oh, you're just so embarrassing. I'm like, no, thanks. And the 11 year old is just like, I can't do any right. I, sometimes I feel oh like, God. sometimes I'm just like, I'm clearly I'm in trouble, but I have absolutely no idea why. And I've got basically, I've got to guess how I'm in trouble or why oh I've pissed God. you off. And it's like, had it. it's tough oh, for dads. It's tough. I had my daughter not a month ago explain to me what Lollapalooza was. What the fuck are you talking about? I was at it. I, <laughs> I, somewhere in storage, I might have a shirt from, yeah. I could tell you set lists from yeah. this. You're going to tell me that there's a big concert and so, and they call it this and who's at it. And I'm wrong for like defending myself. There's no answer. There's, you yeah. just take it. All you can do is like, take it, give them your money. Hope they get something that, that she's not going to be completely naked on the streets. And, uh, Figure out what the next fight is going to be, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? It's literally whether it's financial or you're like, I'm basically just in battle. I have to live in a trench basically forever. And, and my only saving grace is that I might bump into another man and go, are you having a shit time? He's like, yeah. Oh, well, at least we're together. Um, but I that's also true. wouldn't change it. I also I love being a dad. Oh. I kind of love the struggle. Um, yes, because yeah, it's yeah. a bit like surfing. It's like 90% getting smashed in the face with cold water. Right. And you have these pure moments. As you said, this morning, I was helping my son get dressed. And he hadn't brushed his teeth, but you don't mind their bad breath or their, you're just, right. it, it's something that anyone else, will, like, it's like you would never want to change someone else's nap, uh, kid's nappy because it's like, that's disgusting. Right. But you'll tolerate your own. Like you said, you get those two minutes where they're nice to you <laughs> and you'll do anything. You'll do you anything. don't want to ask yeah. why they're different because you'll spoil it. It's like, why are they, yeah. why am I getting this hug? Or why am I told, being told like, you love me? I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it by asking because then I'll ruin it. Then I'm back, right. then I'm back again into uncool dad mode. As soon uh, as you, yeah. Even acknowledging in some ways, but yeah, it's an amazing part of life. It's a, a way better part to be living i think to be going through then but i know what it has meant my wish for people reading your book and for people hopefully listening to this podcast be like i really got actually a sense of calm i'm doing better than on than i am as a dad and i'm not the only person out there who's struggling because we're all struggling but just not everyone and i admire you having the courage to be as transparent and authentic in your book because that takes a lot of courage. It will end up being 
there'll be people, with, there'll be dads who will laugh at it. There's a lot of, there's an enormous sense of pathos in it. So, yeah. Well, I hope that, I hope people will read it. You put it out there and you have no control over what happens. I knew that I needed to be fully honest. I knew that if I bullshitted myself on this, it would show on the page. Yeah, I agree. It all shows your who you are, your limitations, your abilities to match up against what writing is capable, what it's conveyed through our history of our Western world is a it everything that can be said is there. You can go up to the limit of what cannot be said and say, look, after this, there is only silence. There is the unspoken understandings of the larger truths. But you can frame that. And if I wasn't true about my frustrations and my flaws and the times where I really did lose my shit to the detriment of myself and my daughter, that would show. I knew it. And I wanted to give the truth and also better than the truth because I wasn't going to give you every day of it, but to recreate the experience in a good story in that fairy tale. And one of the nice things has been to have people respond to it. I really hope you got something for this podcast and wherever you are in the world, take care. Hey dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers, and guides.